Okay, I guess this is going to be broken into two parts because I had to answer that phone call even though it took me all of maybe 30 seconds. Okay. And uh, this is in stainless steel. This um, is a very, very strong device because each equal and opposite spiral is supporting each other. So this moves as one. So you move one piece of the structure, it moves all pieces of the structure, and, and because they're all supporting each other, it makes an enormously uh, strong, you know, mechanically strong device. So strong you need zip ties. I feel like there's some trolling going on. I just don't know sometimes. So, so we made um, this to do the test work and that it is a component uh, that you'll see on the website. You can have a look at uh, strikefoundation.earth. You'll find that uh, there's a video of where this would be placed in our device and a, and a, a, a conceptualization of how it would function. Because this it actually will go flat uh, here you have a swell guide in the top of it here with a copper device. Is he saying the device needs to be manufactured by you upon receiving its components if he were, were to purchase this? Oh no, did I break you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> not the Not the cool square one. Slash whatever stop sign hexagon. I don't know what shape. It's cool though. You can see it in cross section. <laughs> you messed up putting it together. That's what I was getting at. It's all your fault. You fucked it up, dude. You didn't put it together right. You gotta understand when. Look, you did you did you multiply two by four by eight by seven and get four seven two four eight? Look, if that doesn't make sense, I don't know why you're even buying this. What, you want your money back? Come on, you gotta live and learn, bruh. Presentation, but we have it a circle, <laughs> because you imagine this is at the top, and the flow is coming in, so therefore this is the top of the tornado, and that then goes down uh, from there. So the next one... Again, this is in copper and this is in stainless steel with a shared uh, central swirl guide. And uh, so this would actually be a, uh, it, would, it would thrust from uh, both sides. So it would therefore create zone zero point here because the thrust would be uh, countered against each other. So for a static motor or drive or something, so you didn't have, you know, you were counter-opposing the two thrusts. Um, and this is, uh, you'll see in the next slide, yeah, how this goes together. So that explains that, and this was a the test work for the wind that goes in there, or well, the air can only go in, in this way. So, from the out, outside in, there's no... It even has all these numbers and things when you're running it. Why are all these numbers on it? Like, they look like tags that can physically come off. They don't even look like they're, like, actually part of it. At least I don't see any zip ties. Um... There's a puzzler. <laughs> I see him now. I see him now. Schematic said it's got a car. So it's got a fucking heat of a sun right here, zip tie right here. That, that Is that what I heard? The outside of this device. The next. <laughs> Sorry, so the polycarbonate, and this is where we're using the device to. To fire in quadrature, that is. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh and be rude. 
I appreciate the effort. It's just kind of funny with the zip ties. <laughs> yeah, that we fire positive, negative, positive, negative. And so to the atomic aperture, which will be in the center or the zero point. And of course, as I said, the air comes through these polycarbonate sheets. I mean, it looks nice. I've seen stuff like this on YouTube, though. Like, I don't see anything especially novel until I see them rotating it and producing an outcome. Because I haven't seen them rotating and I've seen them creating, like, co coils to, uh, like, um, Tesla coils, I guess. And here's the stainless steel in here. Now, the crazy thing is you can have polycarbonate as an insulator, as a dielectric, and it works perfectly because the plasmoids will not go through the dielectric. They'll run across the surface. So that makes it perfect. And then they, in this design, they all would run into the stainless steel and charge that. So in this model, you've got the, uh, you know, the same setup. You can see a bit different angle. You can actually see how the blades, the polycarbonate and the copper interact and ge geometrically. And this is why I was uh, saying that with this technology, there's an enormous amount of... I really don't like that he's calling it Vajras because they're literally not. It's nothing like a Vajra. you got to have the same design. You can't just have like... You know, sacred geometry and geometry involved, unless you have a three dimensional mind, you can't even conceive of these devices because they're so advanced. Then they're, and the way they work is amazing because you, know, you have your fire tornado in the center or your, you know, your plasmoids creating that create the path of lightning. Uh, I don't know, dude. That's why I'm watching. running through the center of this and, and the air coming from the outside cools all these blades even though there's a oh, you know that thing that I'm center. not going to explain really just simply demonstrate also here's a you video know, of so the, the this way. rotating watch it rotate and watch the fucking heat check it out look I got this gun it's aimed at the rotating thing notice how much Oh, holy shit, that temperature went up after I turned that on. Look around it. Look, check it out. There's no way for me to be adding heat. I mean, if you want to say I'm just adding heat, fine. You do you, but check it out. No, just, you know, when it produces the tornado heat. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. Protecting these blades and even the polycarbonate blades from excessive heat. The next one. But not them zip ties, bro. So here we it, the uh, the same going from Greek uh, to Roman. You see the same spirals, posing spirals. You know the mirror plane again here. You've got key with twelve holes. Twelve is symbolic of the ether, and sixteen symbolic of matter. So so basically, that's a very important uh, thing. And here you have the key, if you like. Maybe, you know, in legends, the key of David going back further than um, Rome. But the, uh, the Philosopher's Stone, which is meant to be the key to unlock the elements, alchemy. Al being student and Kemet being the Nile River, as we know it now, as, as the main university was in the ancient times was at Alexandria where you had the famous uh, Library of Alexandria but most of that knowledge came, was transmitted through to the Greeks and Romans from Egypt. And this is just showing also the spiral with uh, the Mithraic Kronos. And that represents the uh, implosion of this, that's at the heart of this device. So anyway, there's a lot in there, and uh, uh, Randall Carlson uh, did a lot of study, you know, on these uh, these transitions, and he can go into it uh, in more detail. 
in one of his podcasts. I'm sure he'll enjoy that. Yep. The next. Yeah. yeah, so again, going back to the Greeks, you have here the same sim symbolism where you can see that the Vajra is here, there's four of them, and the four horses here. I think uh, also uh, in amongst the image there, so I, oh yeah, there's, there's the horse there. So, so back. I mean, if you say so. Basically, uh, as I said, it, it goes throughout different civilizations throughout history. So it, it hasn't been lost in history. You know, these people obviously knew it. Uh, there was obviously some of them. <coughs> some of them are. That could be shells, more of like a conch. Something. Between temples and people. Uh, venerated the, uh, the Vajra, and it was a very much a symbol of power. I mean, it's possible that's documented to be considered a Vajra. It's interesting that... <clears throat> I don't know what the hell this is. From a relief or from someone's, like, and drawing of the relief. That in Western society, we seem to have lost pretty much all knowledge of it. Anyway, the next one. So here is uh, Solomon's Molten Sea, which, funnily enough, does work on the same basic principles of the Vajra. You have an imploded sphere here. You have a resonant cavity. You have 10 cubits across. You have 30 cu cubits in uh, circumference, so the uh, but it's actually pi because these edges are rolled over. If you imagine it's a sphere here and you push it down, you create the same monopolar point, but instead of creating that on the equatorial plane, you're creating it at the uh, the two poles come together with a resonant cavity between them, which means the zero point is created here, and this is filled uh, two thirds full with 2,000 baths of water, which interesting enough is 144,000 hin of water. So, which is the 144,000 enlightened ones, which gives the link between an empowerment of individuals, power, and people using uh, this knowledge for good. Obviously the Ark of the Covenant here, which is you know, basically just a, a home to uh, store plasmoids, because they're the atomic batteries that can be created uh, using this device here. If you have this sunshine at midday and you have this two-thirds full, uh, which is a third of the full sphere, then you actually have the, um, the light reflecting and creating a little mirror of or a focus effect here, that means that you create superheated bubbles that then, then would uh, have a, a basically a, an infinity sort of convection. They'd, they'd, they'd go out from the hot center and go back around and come in. So those collapsing bubbles would create plasmoids, which then would charge in this device, and they, those charged plasmoids would then be put into the the basin laver here, and you can see that the symbol here is a fire in the water. That's why this is called the Molten Sea, you know, by Solomon. So that's, you know, the last that I can find in history, and I'd be pleased if anyone could sort of find a, a more a recent one, but I believe that's the last plasmoid generator purpose-built in history, and that's 3,000 years ago. Next. So here you have you know, this uh, in relation to the temple. <sighs> After the covenants inside here, and here's the uh, uh, the lavers, uh, and here's the device, as I said, that would 
work at uh, on the midday sun. Next. So, here's uh, my quote. Our society grew to where it is today substantially on the basis of energy wasting, exploding, centrifugal, uh, centrifugal uh, technology literally centred on an axle. An axle generates explosive centrifugal or you know, uh, centrifugal force from the cart bringing in the crops to charging into battle with the chariot to the axle-based jet-powered fighter plane. However, the age of scientific enlightenment, we are now in demands the use and deployment of energy-efficient implosive vortex forces which are intrinsically less energy-wasting and more effective. We're at the dawn of our new understanding of observing and copying nature's energy-efficient force multiplying implosive vortex mechanisms. Next slide, please. So here is the manifestation of the work of uh, plasmoids. And you remember in section one, I went through the fact that uh, in Job 38, 35, talking about um, God saying, do you know the path of lightning? And the plasmoids responding, yeah, we are here. Here we are. So, so first of all, the plasmoids create these paths and then the potential difference between the earth and the sky discharges along those plasmoids. paths. And this is the same principle that we use to bring the, from the ionosphere to bring the electricity that's coming from the sun using the, our planet as a solar panel and so that, that we can draw down to the Earth those hundreds of millions of volts, hundreds of thousands of amps, structure it, not using copper, which would just evaporate, but uh, being smart and using high volumes of uh, you know, argon gas or inert gases, which will hold charge. And that charge that would come down, imagine the ionosphere here, all the way down to Earth, and then you would put it back up again through a, uh, an ionised column and put in the Schumann cavity to provide en energy from the sun directly to machines on Earth as Tesla did when he had his uh, tuned electric motor with aerials, seven aerials, and he drove from Canada to, Canada to Miami. So the next... Tesla did. So here you have some more examples of... Uh, Plasmoids paths being used to equalise disparate charges in the atmosphere. Next, please. So, and forms of plasma coronal mass ejection. Uh, there be plasmoids involved in these inject injections. And next. Almost so like they stole his name. Obviously, creates the uh, aurora, both north and south hemispheres, the aurora borealis. And then the, uh, the comet you know, has the tail is because you've got a high pressure here and a vacuum behind, it does form plas plasma and as well as plasmoids. Yeah. So next. So here's ball lightning, which uh, because the plasmoid generates its own containment field, therefore it's capable of being... <laughs> So here's a depiction of ball lightning. It's not ball lightning. Here behind, it does form plasma and as well as plasmoids. Yeah. So next. So here's ball lightning, which uh, because the plasmoid generates its own containment field, therefore it's capable of being fundamentally not interacting with the things around it. It can pass through walls. It uh, can go through, you know, like buildings or furniture and pass out the other side without any interaction with the materials, which is quite extraordinary, but it's simply a artifact of its geometry. It has a self-contained electromagnetic field, and self-contained means inward-looking, implosive, inward-looking, self-contained, it does not react with the outside world. Yeah, it might mind me on my island. Thank you. So the next one. 
So here was my test device where I had a Variac and all the, the machines here. This is some photos uh, I took as I was building the device. Simply... Uh, it does not interact with the outside world. It's almost like, then, how does it do anything? Uh, bicycle wheels with spokes to centralize the, uh, the Bajra, uh, and, this, and these are, we had the firing circuit here, um, so, and we had the, uh, uh, here's the distribution, the charge distribution devices, yep. So the next, uh, again, just the same as you saw in the previous slide. Oh, just the, uh, same, just so same, next. No. What was that, too fast? What you, you guys have just more of the same, right? Can we just get to the last slide? Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. Charge distributed. Got some little nub things going on. Impulsive vortex, a waveguide. I thought for sure that was a wheel. <laughs> like a cartwheel. Not a cartwheel, but a wheel for a cart. Like it allows the device to move. Now I'm seeing that maybe it's a vortex waveguide. Electron scavenger. The, uh, uh, Don't like the Vajra the firing circuit. The charge distribution devices, yeah. So the next, uh, again, just the same as you saw in the previous slide. This is just the uh, the test firing setup. Next. Next. Holy yep. fucking yeah. shit, he legitimately did that, though. I didn't actually realize how quick he would do that. Uh, again, just the same as you saw in the pre- There we go. It's like, wasn't this bigger? Oh shit, polycarbonate tube, not bad, dude. One inch steel. That's what we're labeling. Oh, a sheet. Dude, he, he's even got like bolt, nuts, bolts. I don't, I don't, see, I don't even know the terminology. Like, it's incredible that he didn't label the washers up there. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, but like, is that a soda can? Oh my god. Okay, this, like, why would he not talk about this? Is it? Just moved on from whatever's going on here. Like, is this priority? Priority. It's got some kind of, it looks like places for wires to connect that are not connected, or maybe not. I don't know what's going on down here. This thing. Literally didn't really explain any of this. And then the slide, this is just the, uh, the test firing setup. Next. The test yeah, firing setup. One inch bolts. All right, so it's just for testing. Okay. One inch plate. You know, serious forces uh, are being generated, so needs some serious depth of section to hold it. Next. And here's as we saw. So you can see the one inch bolts and the one inch plate. Ooh, I like the little India stuff. Oh, like a bottle, water bottle for the back here. It's this container. That's a little concerning, I'd say. It looks literally like a water bottle. I probably had the this side cut out of it. You know, serious forces. Uh, being I guess that's fine. Whatever. I don't know what its purpose is, so it seems a little odd. Plosive turbine. So this turbine is just hanging out here. Distribution system. Generator, so 
need some serious discharge yep, points. Next. And here's as we saw before, here's the uh, where the measures are going. Here you can see again substantial amount of steel to uh, contain the forces unleashed by this beast here. Where the plasmoids are going, he said. And here's the uh, setup uh, which you'll see in the video with our. So you need a substantial amount of steel to even do this. He just said. He's basically saying you need a fucking setup, dude. Look at these. If this works. So, like, to do this for a car, anything that even mimics some, like, the same process for a car, even on a smaller scale, like, where is that going to go on a car? It shows on the uh, strikefoundation.earth, and uh, you'll see the the relationship between the nose cone and the uh, you know the vajra here and this is actually uh, the precursor to this was this is basically a plasmoid's form where the everything spins out and then spins back into the center again so that's black and white there and so again on the top of our uh, device our cone so anyway the next slide thanks also, using the implosion, here's the concept of, of having an implosive device that focuses the force into the center, and then as a secondary, so you have an initial implosion and a secondary explosion, which is exactly the same as Oppenheimer did design the atomic bomb, and Oppenheimer also wrote the paper with Schneider in uh, 1939 on the force of an imploding bu bubble, the force of an implosion. So the next. So here's some of my experimentation. Just working off the concepts of uh, the um, the use of the measure. Here we see that we have a mixture of polycarbonate and stainless steel on both of these. This is in opposite directions. So you have the concept of you know an imploding vortex here and and an exploding vortex here so anyway this was the my test device at, at our facility in thailand so anyway next so this you can see it atomic aperture do not touch here's because we're using the high voltages and some symmetry there now we're where they're running in the same direction as I said, these are simply uh, bicycle wheels, and we use the spokes to center. <laughs> Dude, don't touch. It's like we got a little skull and bones. See the insulation of these are polycarbonate blades, so actually we're holding it and insulating it at the same time, uh, so that we're uh, containing all the f all the uh, electricity on these blades, and that each firing, the other blades next to it will gain charge, and then into a capacitor and then I would to charge the next time. Fire the next time, say. Uh, yep, next. So here we have again a view there, just uh, we created all these ceramics and uh, to do this test work, high voltage ceramics. And uh, just the, con the whole concept is about implosive force, yeah. So next. Yep, so this is uh, section five, which will be the next uh, talk which will again uh, focus on the thunderstorm generator which is the charging device for the plasmoids which is similar to the molten C. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in section six. Thank you. Go to section five. Section five. We'll see you on section five. No. Okay. I mean not the worst presentation of things no video whatsoever so that's a little disappointing honestly like going through that he should have had video but i know there's video elsewhere so it's not that important it's just 
I'm not sure there's an exact video of what he was exactly talking about elsewhere. Like those aspects, it would be nice to have a specific video embedded with it. But uh, let's see, just some thoughts real quick. I've liked I don't know if it actually has any functionality. I don't know if there's functionality. This does he see the intro? Does he see uh, it? No. Just like how it has a sphere that's like to the edge and then another sphere and it looks like I don't know, some kind of layer here. Initially I thought it actually had like a drainage point. But it looks like maybe not. I'm not sure what's going on between them. It would be cool if it had like a kind of drainage town that focused to the edge of this one and then I don't know. Something of that nature. But I have no idea what exactly is going on here, but it looks, I mean, some idea, but I don't really understand what all this is about. I don't really understand what's going on here uh, from what he said. Uh, I can kind of get a general idea that he's saying, well, this is directing charge and creating plasmoids. But in terms of, like, how it's doing it, I cannot, like, fully grasp so not to say that it is fully graspable because it may just not be doing it but like let's say it is i cannot fully grasp and there's no way like truly uh, persuasive demonstration that uh persuades so we just gotta keep going. I mean, that, it's promising that he's getting into some details and there's a lot to go. So maybe like, it will become more rigorous as we go and not fade back into more like, okay, we talked about the rigorous stuff. Now we're gonna go back to like casually talking about this pretty much. We'll see. All right, until next time. Thanks. Uh, all right, peace out, guys.